Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Heater. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. And Father, we thank you that as our viewers, as they listen today, that light comes, revelation comes. And Father, we purpose to be doers of that which we hear for it's the doer that's blessed. So we thank you for your word that it transforms our life. And we give you all the praise. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Um, in looking to the Lord of what He would have me to preach on, um, He began dealing with me first about teaching on the mind. Isn't that interesting that He had us to start uh, with the mind? And uh, because everyone's got one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and everyone has to know how to handle yeah. the thought life. Yeah. Thankfully, God has given us his thoughts. This word right here is the thoughts of God. Amen. He offers them to us. Right. Let's take it. Yes. Let's take his thoughts. I mean, if someone, if a, billion, a millionaire or a billionaire walked up to you and say, I offer you my checkbook, <laughs> you would be a fool not to take it. <laughs> right? Yeah. This is greater than any checkbook That's that right. a man can That's offer true. you. That's right. If yes. God offers it and we go, mm, I'm busy. Come on. Mm. Oh, wow. maybe not. Mm. Mm. I've got other things to do. Mm. Are you kidding? Mm. <laughs> God offers us yes. his mind, yes. his thoughts, yes. his ways of doing things. So we're going to be wise enough to say, I take it. Yes. And I don't just take selected parts. I take it all. Take it all. Not just taking our favorite parts. <laughs> but we take it all. You know, the word says that to the hungry man, every bitter thing tastes good. Mm. What's that mean? That when you're hungry, you're not going, mm, I don't like that. I'm not eating that. Mm. No, if you're hungry right. and yes. that's what's available to you, you're grateful for it. Yeah. Sometimes what we need to do when we take his word is make corrections, make adjustments, make changes. Yeah. And I tell you what, to hear changes that we need to make, that's a good thing to a hungry man. Yes. When you're hungry, that I just want to be right. I want right. God's flow. Yes. And if I have to make changes to think like God, yes. I'm going to make those changes because my help is in my change. Um, <clears throat> just a few weeks um, after this event, my husband in 2013, he went home to be with the Lord suddenly. About two weeks after that, I was standing in my hallway and um, up out of my spirit came a particular verse and it came up so forcefully that I just spoke it out my mouth even before I had time to run it through my mind. You know, it's like you're saying it and you're almost saying, well, who's saying that? <laughs> well, and realize I'm saying it. And he up out of my up out of my heart came uh, the scripture that's found in Hebrews, I believe, chapter thirteen, verse six, and it says, uh, "I will boldly say, the Lord is my helper." And uh, up out of my spirit came those words, and I just said it out loud: "I will boldly say, the Lord is my helper." And then, after I spoke those words, God answered that verse to me, and up out of my spirit. God spoke to me and said, do you know how I help you? By putting my word in your mouth. See, many times when we think of the Lord helping us, we think of him showing up instantly and changing something instantly. But one of the primary ways that God helps us is by offering us his word 
And then we take that help and we put it in our mouth. But not only do we put it in our mouth, we put it in our thought life. Because sometimes people can speak the right thing because they've been around the word and they've been around the teaching of the word long enough to know, well, this is the right thing to say. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about in your thought life? It's one thing to say it with your mouth, but you also have to have faith thoughts, thoughts Mm -hmm. of the word. Mm -hmm. You know, it says over in James that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't even let him think he'll receive anything of the Lord because he's double-minded. And you say, well, what's double-minded? Well, one way of being double-minded would we say one thing to others, but privately we think something different to Uh, ourselves. When nobody else hears what we're thinking, because some people have learned to say the word. They have learned to say, Jesus is my healer. But in their thought life, they're thinking, it's getting worse. I don't know what I'm going to do. You see, that's double-minded. Yeah. Because even though you know the right thing to say, you have to also discipline the mind to think yes. the right thing. Right. Right. That's good. That's Praise right. the Lord. Yeah. And so it's so important that we know what to do with our minds. Your family loves you, but they can't think right for you. That's right. Your pastor loves you but your pastor can't think right for you. You are the one responsible before God to do something with your thought life. If something in your thought life is troubling you, now you know where to put your attention. Now I'm going to take the word and I'm going to apply the word to that area that's trying to trouble my life. Maybe you're worried or troubled over finances or over your body or over a child or over a marriage, a business, a a, a relationship. What tries to trouble your life, that arena that tries to trouble you, now you know where to renew your mind in. Worry is a sign that further renewing of the mind needs to take place. Wow. Wow. You know what that means? You catch yourself and you call you you call yourself. I'm wrong. Yeah. I've been thinking wrong. Yes. I've got to change that. Yes. And that's a positive that when that's we right. recognize right. a change that needs to be made, uh, the more we will change, the more glory will come into. Because the word says we are changed from glory to glory. So the more, when we make a change in line with the word, we come into another flow of glory, a greater degree of glory. And when more changes are made, greater degrees of glory. So change is not negative. Don't be, don't ever become defensive. Uh, if something is spotlighted by God, by another person, by a pastor, through the sermon, his sermon can spotlight things for you, right? That you go, and people will put up a defense over that. That's a, like an off limits topic or something. That's a sign that we need to make a change. And I am so glad that God shows me where to make changes in my life. Amen. I've said this for years, I've pastored for 25 years. And I've said this for years it's not what we're doing right that hurts our life. It's what we're doing wrong. So when a man of God preaches and I'm shown what I need to correct, I'm thankful. I'm not protective against that or defensive against that. I want to know what am I doing wrong? Where's the open door? And so so much of the time it's wrong thinking that is opening the door to wrong things happening in our life. And although all the blessings of God belong to us, if we think wrong, it will hinder the flow of God's blessings. Now listen, God doesn't send blessings then retract blessings. Right. Send blessings then withhold blessings. Right. His flow is never hindered mm-hmm. on His end, but we can hinder receiving of that flow by how we think, by how we speak, how we believe, how we respond. And part of the blessing of God that is such a that belongs to us, our inheritance is in Christ is a sound mind. That belongs to us, that we should not be okay with uh, living with a harassed mind, a troubled mind, a tormented mind, a worried mind, a fearful mind. But some of the time, some people have had it so long, that flow song their life, they don't even recognize that it's a wrong flow. It's normal to them. 
Fear thoughts are normal. Worried thoughts are normal. You say, well, what, how do I know if it's a worried thought? I'm not worried, Pastor Nancy. I'm just concerned. Yeah, that's what I mean, worried. Mm -hmm. um, Dad Hagen, who is our spiritual father, taught us this definition of worry. How do you know if you're worrying if you're thinking about it? Yes. Now listen to that. How do you know if you're worrying if you're thinking about it? So pay attention that what you're calling normal can be worry. The Holy Ghost will help you. Right. He will help yes. you catch a flow of worry that to you has been normal. Right. Maybe you were raised around that. It was normal for you to think that way, but thank God for the thoughts of God that shows us changes to make because God wants us to have a mind of peace he wants us to have a mind that's untroubled. Now listen, troubles will come, but we don't have to be troubled by troubles. Yes. That's right. And that's, that's right. called skill in the thought life. Yes. Troubles come, opposition comes, circumstances arise. Being born again doesn't mean they don't come. Being born again means you know what to do every time they come. Amen. Renewing your mind, disciplining the thought life means you know what to do with those thoughts that come. Amen. 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 We're told to renew our minds. To renew our mind is to discipline the thought life. Now, as I said that sometimes people can be so entrenched in worry and depression that to them that depressed flow is normal. But it's not normal to the life of God. And the life of God is on the inside of you to establish the flow of God. And so depression is a counterflow to the life of God. It's an opposition to God's flow. There is a precious uh, man of God, a minister. Um, he knew the word. He knows the word. Precious man of God. But this goes to show that I don't care who you are, we all have to become skillful in the thought life. But years ago, he talks about the time that depression came. And depression was so bearing down on him. It's almost like you get in a ditch. If you're not careful, wrong thoughts will put you in a ditch. And the longer you think those thoughts, the deeper the ditch gets. And you get entrenched yes. in a way of wrong thinking. And then it seems like you, it can almost seem like, well, my mind's not even my mind. Yeah, it's your mind. It's your mind. It's still under your control, but you get entrenched in a certain thing that you feel like it's taken out of your control. Well, how do you change that? Start speaking the word. Uh, get out of that wrong ditch. <laughs> and uh, this, this precious man, he, he got into a ditch of depression. And uh, he didn't know how to take his stand against it. And he got worse and worse, and he was sitting, I mean, just every day, just sitting in a dark room, pulling the shades. And uh, after a time, a season of this, he was sitting in this room one day, and in that cloud of depression on him, and Jesus walked in. And I love it. Jesus didn't say anything to him. He didn't speak anything to him. He walked in. He came over and sat down in a chair right by this man. He put his hand on, his, on the knee of this man, and he started laughing. And the man just is looking at Jesus. Jesus is just laughing. <laughs> and he watched him laugh for a minute, and then he thought, well, I ought to do what he's doing. So he started laughing. The Word is what God's doing. Do what he's doing. Yes. Right. <laughs> so this, this man thought it won't do any good for me just to watch him laugh. I better start laughing too. So he started laughing. Jesus initiated and showed him the, the flow in the face of depression. Mm -hmm. Started laughing. Yes. Yeah. And when he did and the man joined in, that flow started flowing out of him too. And what happened, that flow rose and rose and rose until it drowned the depression. Amen. And then after a time of laughing together, Jesus got up and walked out of the room and the man was free. Crazy. Now, you're not assured that Jesus is going to walk into the room mm -hmm. yeah. and sit down 
and lead you and initiate something, but you are assured of the word. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You can, anytime you need to, yes. pick up that word Amen. and say, this is Jesus talking to me. This yes. is me having fellowship and communion with my Father. Yes. What's the word say? At famine and destruction, mm -hmm. I will laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Think of that. Yes. That's the instruction of the word. At famine, what's famine? Not enough. Right. Sometimes you can have a famine financially. It seems like there's not enough. You can have a famine in some other area. It seems like there's not enough. Maybe it seems like there's not enough love in your marriage. At the famine of love. At the famine of not enough. It looks like your business doesn't have enough to make it successful. At famine and destruction. What's destruction? Anything that would destroy. Whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, whether it's your marriage, your home, your children, at anything that threatens to destroy my life, I'll laugh. Mm -hmm. Why? Not because the situation is laughable, but because of what I know. Right. Yes. Amen. I laugh because I know something. Right. Not because I feel something. Yeah, right. Not because I feel right. like laughing, but yeah. because I know yeah, that's right. that rejoicing, yes. the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when you get into rejoicing, the joy that's on the inside of the born again spirit will spring up and it will break things off. And that's what happened with this man who was in depression. It would not have done him any good to sit and watch Jesus laugh. If he would have just sat and watched Jesus laugh, Jesus would have walked out and that man still be right. held by depression. Yeah. But he entered in. It's not enough to own a Bible. <laughs> it's not enough to carry it. You have to enter in. That's right. yes. Yes. You have to enter into the thoughts of God. You have to enter into the actions that that uh, the Word shows that are the ways of God. And when you do, things change. Amen. 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 So, a renewed mind is one that takes the thoughts of God. And many think that the devil is their problem. If you're born again, the devil's not your problem. <laughs> Jesus, he, he uh, overcame him. He overcame. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. We have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. We're in a different kingdom. We're no longer under the dominion and the lordship of the devil. We live in a different... We're in the household of faith now. Amen. Amen. So we have to quit thinking like the old household. We have to think like the household of faith. And uh, so many times people think that the devil is their problem, but the real problem is an undisciplined thought life, an unrenewed mind. And so the renewing of the mind is a process. It's something that takes time for us to do. Now, in the previous episode, we looked at Romans chapter 12. I want to go back to there. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. And the King James translation reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Look at this. You are the one that has to do something with your body. When you were born again, God did something with your spirit. He gave you a new one. But now you've got a soul and a body that has to have something dealt with. <laughs> and we're the custodians of our soul yes. and of our body. We're the ones that have to do something with yes. it. And so it says here that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So what's this mean? Present your bodies. Mm -hmm. Present it to God. Yes. Submit it to God. That means we no longer submit. Before we were born again, we submitted or we presented our bodies to wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. We would allow our bodies to do wrong things, go wrong places. But now that we're born again, we submit it to God. We present it to God. Why? To be His vessel. Yes. Our body. Yes. He is, we are His body in the earth. Yes. We are the body of Christ yes. that's in the earth. So now our body is at His disposal. 
that he can send this body to places yes. and bless others yes. and flow through this body yes. to bless others. So um, verse one tells us what to do with our body, present it to God, mm -hmm. submit it to God for his use. Then verse two says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So verse one tells us what to do with our body. Verse two tells us what to do with our mind. Renew the mind. Take on the thoughts of God. Amen. Lay down any thought of your own that contradicts or opposes the thoughts of God and agree with what God says. Yes. Why? Because God knows that us submitting our bodies to him and renewing our mind is the greatest defense mm -hmm. against the devil. Yeah, that's right. People, many times they'll want their pastor to pray for them. Pastor, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. Um, what people many times are wanting is for somebody else to get the devil to leave them alone. <laughs> so they ask you, lay your hands on me. Pray for me. Listen, I believe in the laying on of hands. I believe in praying for someone. But you can't get the devil to leave you alone. I mean, he's going to oppose you. What we have to become skillful at is being untroubled when he shows up. Right. That's right. That's right. Knowing what to do yeah. when he shows up. Yeah. Knowing what to think yeah. when he shows up. Well, how, Pastor, how do we know what the Word says? Right. What the Word says. Yes. That's what to think. That's what to do. That's how to answer when those things show up. Amen? Amen. So we submit our bodies to God. And we renew our minds with the, with the Word. But I want you to look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. I want you to see something else that we have as a help. Because we are the ones that have to do something with our body. We're the ones who have to do something with our mind. But we have divine help in this. Amen. The Word is our divine help by speaking the Word, holding to the Word, standing on the Word. But Romans chapter 8 and verse 13 says, just a portion of it says, Through the Spirit you do mortify the deeds of the body. Now notice this. What's that mean? Through the Spirit, you mortify the deeds of the body. You know, when you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, when you speak in other tongues, you are mortifying the deeds of the body. You're, if I could say this, when you take time to speak in other tongues, you're strengthening your spirit and the body is losing dominion mm -hmm. over you. And so as you take time to speak in other tongues, your spirit is built up, it's edified, it's charged up and it's strengthened so it can stay in dominion over the body. So many times people are saying, well, I'm trying to get my body from, I'm trying to stop this bad habit. Take time to speak in other tongues. Because what will happen, it will fortify you and you'll be built up on the inside and then it will be an easy thing for you to say no to the flesh. Say no to the body. Amen. Amen. Now, I was talking about this in the previous episode that we are a spirit. We possess a soul made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And we live in a body. So you are a spirit. The body wants to do wrong. But the born again spirit wants to do right. That's right. Amen. Amen. So what determines which wins? Does the flesh win? Or does the spirit win? Because they're opposed to each other in this. Well, what, what determines is what you do with the mind, mm -hmm. the soul. Mm -hmm. The soul is the one that's the variable. Yeah. The soul will either side in with the flesh or side in with the spirit. Mm -hmm. The unrenewed mind will side in with the flesh. Mm -hmm. And then the flesh and the mind will gang up on the spirit. Right. And keep it under and push it under and dominate it. Mm -hmm. But if you renew your mind mm -hmm. with the word of God, what happens is the mind sides in with the spirit. Amen. Amen. And when the mind sides in with the spirit, the flesh is kept under. Amen. Wow. So that's why the life is transformed. You're transformed through the renewing of your mind because now your mind will side in with your spirit and keep the body in the place where it belongs. Listen, the body is not evil. God gave you your body, but God did not give you your body to lead you and to dominate you. Your spirit is to take the lead. Your spirit is to dominate. And so as you take time to pray in other tongues, 
then as you yield, present your body to God, you yield your body to God, and then you take time to pray in the spirit, it will keep the body in check so that the body doesn't run off with your life. (laughs) If you leave the body undisciplined, it'll run off with your life. It'll take you wrong places. An unrestrained body can ruin a life. Even of the born again believer. It can take it into places it shouldn't go, into ways and habits that shouldn't be there. So what do you do? You renew your mind so that you think right. And so, and then you strengthen your spirit, feeding it on the word, praying in the Holy Ghost. And that fortifies the spirit so that now it's, it's, uh, it's in the lead and it's dominating the flesh and say, no, you don't. Your body is to serve you, not lead you. Amen. Amen. My, 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 my. There's so much to learn about this. And, uh, We want to be good students of the word because God has ordained that we live days of heaven on earth, a mind full of peace, a mind that is calm and disciplined and uh, balanced. Amen. So I want to pray for you. I speak to every person who's being troubled and harassed in your mind. Satan, you take your hands off their mind. And I, and I pray, Father, that they be strengthened with might in their inner man, that the life of God, the peace of God, would rise up on the inside of them and would take dominion over that which the enemy would work. And I thank you, Father, for your peace flowing and moving and operating in their life. I thank you, Father, for the light of the word and that they're strengthened to be doers of that word and to take their place in victory. And we thank you, Father, for the light of the word. I tell you what, Um, the word won't leave you like it found you. The word of God will take your life and set it on course. Um, I've been teaching out of this book, a sound disciplined mind. I tell you what, it's the greatest need in the body of Christ is to have a disciplined thought life, renewing the mind. Amen. So we want you to get hold of it. Contact us at DufresneMinistries.org and we'll get it right to you. But until next time, we want to remind you that Jesus is the healer. God bless you. We'll see you next time. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Please join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Fredonia, New York at Family Church Fredonia, August 14th through the 18th. Come expecting your miracle. For more information, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.